And we're recording! Yay! All right, man. Well, uh, we uh, have decided to podcast on the eve that our commander in chief declares an emergency to possibly build a wall. We don't know that yet because the speech current time is eight forty p.m. Yeah, uh, Tuesday night. Uh, so we'll we'll see what we're looking at. So yeah, so uh, yeah. If uh, if we are still here, this. This post will go sometime later in the week. If it doesn't, yeah. we'll never see this ever. Yeah, you know, whatever. Feeling real we'll, positive yeah. about everything. Yeah, yeah, we'll figure it out. It'll be fine. <laughs> so, Brandon Chalmers, <laughs> what have you been yeah. geeking on? <laughs> God damn it, Jamie Noguchi. I want to talk about the classic movie Twister. Okay. I have actually never seen Twister. Wow! The fucking soundtrack alone... You need to watch it's Twister. Like they commissioned a Van Halen song for this movie, dude. And like right when it's getting near, it gets near like the big crescendo of the movie. It goes from a symphony um, organization version of Van Halen to the rock version when they turn literally from a highway to a dirt road. It is a yeah. It is quite literally a hard turn. Is it Panama? No, it is not Panama. Because oh, that would be amazing. <laughs> Yeah, if you ever if you ever heard the song Humans Being, mm, mm-hmm. that song. I I still want it to be Panama because I want Bill Paxton to freak out about the 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 Twister like it's gonna come in here like it did last time. <laughs> Meanwhile, like Panama. Yeah, it's 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 real good. But anyway, that that aside, there's a separate time where um, I am a huge fan of Philip Seymour Hoffman. Uh, always have been. So this is one of my favorite roles of his, where he plays kind of a stoner burnout guy who's like their go-to guy on all things physical named Dusty. And Dusty <laughs> clearly like drinks a little too much uh, Kool-Aid and is a little off and wired and would like play music and stuff like that at a speaker. As a speaker is like these storm chasers all had their own individual vehicles. He drove a like a switched around decommissioned short school bus <laughs> complete with like old TVs and all sorts of stuff like that. Like nice. he's that AV kid that, that went a little too far down one path. And oh, then yeah. the, clearly these science nerds in college were like, come sweetheart, come with us. You can, <laughs> you can chase tornadoes. It'll be fun. <laughs> so during one of the first scenes where like, they go storm chasing, um, they you know dusty's riding in the in the vehicle and he fires up literally just about at the three minute and 10 second mark of a what is like a 10 and a half minute song is deep purple's child in time which if you haven't heard this song might be possibly the most metal thing ever with like predating metal like it, it has to be genesis for metal there's <laughs> shrieking vocals there's pounding drums there's an organ solo with it but literally like it goes from crescendo building stairway to heaven style build up into just full on just head banging and then a shredding like slash on top of a piano with the helicopter can't hold a candle to this fucking solo the oh, way this nice. dude rips into it nice. is a fucking 20 leave it to me to rediscover something from a movie released in i believe 1996 from a song that was released in 1969 so <laughs> <laughs> well i mean that's how i discovered bohemian rhapsody i'd never heard it until wayne's world so wow i know Man, that you know, Jamie. For as much as we kind of go back and forth about white culture, seventies classic rock may be the best definition of it. And I know, obviously, it's all completely stolen from all other cultures and everything else like that. Yeah, but yeah, like, yeah. I, I, I think there might be a peak. There, there might be a treasure trove 
of ridiculous songs that I can expose you to. Uh, one other one I'll, I'll put for the homework kids if you haven't listened to it. It's Focus by a band called Hocus Pocus, <laughs> which is outstanding and way too long. There's there's a song by the Allman Brothers. Or not the Allman okay. Brothers. Um, uh, oh, God. What? What's the name of the song? It's called Crazy Horses. Okay. By the... Oh, my gosh. Okay, um, we have the internet. It's Crazy, it's crazy Horses by... Uh, it's not the Allman Brothers. It's... Um, uh, the Osmonds? Yes, the Osmonds. Okay. The Osmonds are not a group that you would associate with heavy metal or songs that make you want to go out and beat the shit out of somebody. But I am telling you, this Crazy Horses song, out of nowhere, with little Donny Osmond, the, the band, it just, this song, ex- gotcha. this song, this song pumps. This song makes Jamie? you, like, this is a workout song. This is like a metal thrashing song. And, and you wouldn't know it because the rest of their stuff is just like teeny boppy, whatever, bubblegum, right. nice shit. I, man, you and I just need to buy one of those like radio licenses to be an able to play. Like, license. <laughs> yes, we need to buy an ASCAP license just so that we can podcast about actual music and play said music. <laughs> yeah, so this way kids can understand what the fuck we're talking about. Really what I want to do is I want to host a radio show. Yeah, That's yeah. getting down to. The craziest, uh, the craziest <laughs> thing about this thing, it starts off with this... Um, the sound that goes wah, 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 and it like sounds that. like a horse when you and and I it's I think it's like a lap steel that he's doing making oh, okay. a horse when and it's because I've seen them perform it live and the live version is not as heavy as the recorded version I don't know what they I, did but like they went into the studio with massive testicles and just like started yeah. hitting things with them nice I mean that's cool I, it's if the Osmonds were doing that. With their funky like disco hair, I yeah, people would have would have lost their shit. It would have been amazing. Crazy horses. <laughs> okay, I, I have it brought up on my phone to play when we get done this. The other thing before we move on that I am geeking out about, uh, I'm going to start posting up about it tomorrow. I've already preemptively started it. Uh, Ross Nover. Super Art Fight host with the most has thrown out a challenge internally to the Art Fight roster. <laughs> That I am dubbing the first annual Ross Nover Fitness Invitational. <laughs> Every day for 30 days with a $5 buy-in. You throw in five bucks, you put your name on a list, you fill it out every day. The second you miss a day, you forfeit your buy-in. Everyone who completes the challenge at the end splits the pot completely evenly. The challenge is 50 air squats, 50 sit-ups, 50 push-ups. Every day without missing a beat doesn't matter what else you do you have to do those things without question nice get fit or get hit (laughs) not even that just more i think some of us me especially i crave challenge (laughs) like i like competition like nothing gets me going faster than somebody going you can't do that because my immediate reaction is oh fuck Mm. and you and (laughs) yes i can watch me like that's just how i operate yeah right yeah. So, um, so like the asshole that I am, uh, we talked about this two days ago. I'm already two days in. The challenge doesn't start until tomorrow on Wednesday. Oh. Um, yeah. So I am I am well ahead of the curve. So on Wednesday, January 9th, if if our president has not declared war on <laughs> something, um, <laughs> We're and maybe even like this is the thing, Jamie. We all watched uh, whatever it is, Zombieland, like. Cardio. It's it's time to step our game up, kids. When the apocalypse comes, you need to be able to get some crunches going. You're gonna want those abs, I promise you. Yeah. Abs on abs on abs. Yeah, you can't climb over a wall to get out of this country without abs, kids. I can promise you. You don't want that tum catching on the barbed wire as you come up over the end. <laughs> Rip. Yeah, oh. yes. Yeah, yeah, suck that in. Got to tape it down. So, uh, so yeah, so this will be the first year that we're doing that. So I am excited for that. So follow along. We will be talking a lot of smack on each other. Um, I believe currently right now the roster is myself, a one Ross Nover, a one Marty Day, uh, a Marty? one Charm City Shinder. Yep, Marty, Marty doesn't Day. have arms. How is he going to do push-ups? Man's going to commit. <laughs> this was completely voluntary, by the way, and no one has been pushed into anything. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, Charm City Shinobi Dan Malahome, nice. uh, former Art Fight photographer Emily, uh, nice. the Valkyrie, um, Brian Prindeville, Old Man Prindeville, no shit. Uh, and our own Stevie Speed uh, so far has been offered to join into this. So I already have my two favorites. Uh, one, uh, you, and two, <laughs> Prindeville. Yeah. And I would have put Dan as a high third, but he has a kid. Right. And even though there are even though Miles is at the stage where you just kind of sit him and he does his thing. New dad new dad time, you're going to miss a day. Right. You're going to miss a day. But but all things yeah. being equal, Dan would have been my in my top 3. Dan's a strong contender. I got to admit like I uh, as of this morning, uh, a one Brian Printable was not involved. I, I got his attention and kind of uh, nudged him into it. So, admittedly, I'm taking on a gentleman who has completed P90X. Um, so, oh, yes. man's no joke. Uh, yes. I, can, I can promise you, pound for pound, he is probably the fittest art fighter among us. Yeah. Um, and, and I have worked out with a one Ross Nover. Um, that dude... Also, by the way, Jamie, I don't know if he actually counts as it is his invitational, but he is involved in it. I have videotaped this man doing handstand push-ups. So I think him meeting this bar is almost a foregone conclusion. Yeah. The only thing that I'm now debating is, as we get closer to the end of it, will he try and pull some shit and do double or nothing? Well, here's the thing. There's no leg day on this, so of course he's going to do it. Nonsense. They're air squats. What are air squats? Where you you'd use you do a squat only no weight, so oh, you're just okay. you know arm arms out feet even equidistant apart feet don't you know heels don't come off the floor very clean squats which will blast your your thighs yeah. like absolutely blast your thighs yeah so you know we've got arms we've got abs we've got legs nice yeah so we'll we'll see how he does. Um, and and my only debate is how long into this thing before I start challenging people to beat that fifty <laughs> every day. Yeah, that, um, my money's on you and Prindy. So yeah, so the only uh, thing that Ross over threw in there as a a curious like caveat is if you miss a day, you have the ability to make up those uh, those push ups, sit ups, and and uh, squats. Ooh. Right. So a one charm city shouldn't be could go hard in the paint. And decide, oh, I missed a day. I'm doing a hundred. Okay. Today. All right. Well, then Dan is back in my top three. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is, this is, I, I don't give a shit about sports. So this is my fantasy football. There you go. I, I like where it is. I, I appreciate <laughs> me uh, being in your top tier. Yeah. It's, it's nice to just be considered a contender. <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so after after uh, getting kind of poked at about that, it was like, you know what? That seems like a lot of fun, and now it's become a, a real challenge. Uh, I'm curious if this will become a regular thing, and uh, if we'll figure out a way to up the stakes a bit and maybe put a real cash pot on it you, for anybody. You gotta just roll it into the next month. like That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, it's like, gotta be month by month. That way people can jump in. You know, if, if January, then if people know that January is gonna be too busy... They just chill that out. But if they want to hop in in February, they can hop in in February. They can hop in in March. I, I think it should be like, I think it should just go year round. Yeah. I So for anyone following along with us, um, feel free to uh, send us Instagram videos or tweet at us. I won't see it, but feel free um, on everything. Uh, use the hashtag Ross Nover Fitness Invitational or any combination of the like. You know, it would be, uh, it would be interesting if... Uh, you could turn it into like a fan event, like open it up to everybody. Well, I think we need to get through the idea of us completing it first. Yeah. Because if Hard Fight has taught me anything, we talk a big game and then follow through is always a challenge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we'll, let's see where we are come late January uh, when this thing starts getting into the tail end of everything. I like it. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. So that'll that'll be it. Um, what about you? What are you geeking out about? So, Other than that hair of yours is going woo! skyward. Yeah. Um, so I do not give a shit about award shows. Don't give a shit about, like, even the awards for our industry, like the Eisners, 
or the Ignance until like a friend of mine is up for something. So like if Zara or Mike Dent are ever up for like a Golden Globe or an Oscar or something like that, <laughs> then I will give a shit. That, um, that's fair. That's fair. However, um, Sandra O oh hosted, was one of the co-hosts of the Golden Globes over the past weekend and she won. Yes. Um, yes. Which is awesome. The, the funniest the funniest thing that was sent around uh, Asian Twitter, I guess if there's an Asian Twitter, um, <laughs> there's a moment when she's talking about films that it had happened, I think in 2018, and she said something about like Crazy Rich Asians being the first film starring Asian leads since Ghost in the Shell and Aloha. And and people laugh their heads off, and like when right. when, the, when the laughter died down from the back of the room, you hear this, I'm sorry! You hear Emma Stone. Emma Stone. <laughs> yelling at the top of her lungs, I am sorry. So for those of you who are unsure why this is hysterical, um, there was a romantic comedy that came out sometime, I think it was last year or the year before that. It was called... Maybe two years ago. Yeah, or something like that. It was called Aloha, yeah. starring Emma Stone, and I don't even know who else, because... Yeah, who cares? Who cares? Um, but Emma Stone's character is supposed to be like a quarter Asian, or... Hawaiian or something like that, and yeah. um, she got a she got tremendous backlash, right? Um, for for portraying this character, and she felt horrible about it. Like she right. she went on you know press tour apologizing, like the director apologized. They're like right, yeah. Like I think in her, if memory serves, in her head, she did not know this was a thing she wasn't aware that that was the case and right. she wasn't intentionally trying to whitewash this character in any way shape or form she saw a role that she thought she was interested in that yeah. she enjoyed and went yeah i'd like to do this yeah that's exactly that's exactly what it was from from emma stone's pr perspective and you know the director had knew what was going on like he knew the background right. of her character and all right. that kind of stuff and he didn't think it was a big deal at the time but like the backlash happened and he was like i am really sorry about this i i did not right i did not intend to offend anybody with this so like i i feel like in in her case you know you, a paycheck is a paycheck like you know if you're if you find a fun project and you don't necessarily do the background on on the thing you know i don't expect actors to go deep into like the lore of the project that they're getting on and, and like right well also like it's a romantic comedy why would she deep dive into this yeah like she sees the she sees the script she's like yeah this is enjoyable i can be kind of adorable it'll be a nice quick filler there will already be a built-in audience for this this works out well for me it's it's an easy thing i don't have to spend six hours in makeup like a fucking x-man movie yeah, yeah. But like awesome cool all yeah. right so she's let been, me do the thing she's been eating a little bit of shit for this ever since ever since then and, right and she's she feels really bad about it and so like sandra O oh giving that just little bit of a dig, right yeah she's like i get it i'm sorry i'm really sorry and then sandra I, O's response was just and then she went on with it right yeah it's because so beautiful. that's that is equally a great dig yeah because uh, she has to like why wouldn't she make that dig but good on emma for owning it trying to make light of it and then just living in that in that environment because yeah. who else is going to respond and of course it, it is is anyone throwing shade at scarlett johansson oh oh yes my okay. girl my girl scar joe Please tell me the cameras cut to Scarlett Johansson. I, I don't. They didn't. They, they they didn't cut away from the people on the podium. But like, right? Homegirl has has not been has not had it easy. So like, um, Ghost in the Shell. For those of you who are unfamiliar, is a um, anime manga um, <clears throat> takes place in in Neo Tokyo and stars uh, Major Kusanagi, who is a cyborg. It's a, a brain in a robot's body. And it's debatable. Her ethnicity is debatable. If you talk to Mamoru Oshii, the guy who directed the original animated film, he he always kind of considered the major to be sort of like ethnically androgynous. I don't know if that's a term. Um, I got well, it. En enough of a, uh, of a mixed <laughs> bag of backgrounds that there's nothing super discernible in that sense. Yeah. 
Um, so for for Japanese audiences, they 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 view they have a favorable opinion of white people. So like when when white people star in Asian projects, everybody gets excited over it. For, okay. For Asian Americans, when we see things like this, we kind of see ourselves in those roles, and so like. For a bunch of us, Ghost in the Shell was really important because Major Kusanagi was a lead character and she was Asian, and this was a very formative movie in the '90s for for like early anime and people really were digging it. Late '90s, right. early 2000s, whatever. Whatever, yeah. Whatever. Um, so Scarlett Johansson gets cast, and there's an uproar. My attitude was kind of like, I'm irritated, but there is a there's an understanding, there's a, there's a tacit understanding between Asian Americans and when our characters get whitewashed. Like, okay, movie, we see what you're doing. That's fine. You don't want us in your movie. Just, just don't acknowledge it. Just go on with your life. We'll pretend right. that, you know. Right. But to somehow address the controversy, the filmmakers decided that the major would would be would actually be a Japanese girl whose brain was taken and put into Scarlett Johansson's body, as if that would make everything better. So they're physically whitewashing they're her as opposed to white. just yeah. uh, just metaphorically whitewashing her. Exactly. Why exactly. would they do that? I don't it, know. How does that make it any like I, I don't, oh, okay, so so understand. I did not see the movie. I have not watched the anime. I do not hold it in the same regard as a lot of people do because I have not seen it. So please understand that my questions come from a completely objectively outside view here. Would it have justified you in the sense of very similarly to um, what Emma Stone said? If Scarlett Johansson went online and said, the producers came to me, they asked me to star in this role, they wanted to have my name attached to the film, so this way it got made, it got global press, it got everything else, so that we could move the project along. I understand that you know the character is traditionally Japanese, or at least assumed to be traditionally Japanese, however, the producers and the creator asked me to star in this film, so I thought it, it you know, I felt comfortable with the role. Would that at least of given you some sort of like okay at least she fucking gets it yeah i mean that would have been fine like if she if she acknowledged any of it if she came out and said like i understand why people are upset i just right this is right. this was a role i thought it was interesting you know they're not right. giving me a black and, widow movie yet fuckers um I've, right and and also given what you just told me about japanese audiences with american characters it would also make sense that if the movie is going to play in both a u.s market for People who have not seen anime but see Scarlett Johansson in an action movie might be Mm -hmm. curious to go. And also the Japanese market who is super into big name American actors playing in these roles. You're feeding both beasts at the same time. Yeah. And I understand the the dislike on your end, but at least I think most people who are level-headed enough to kind of take things as they are are going to be okay with it. There are going to be people who are, of course, no matter what happens, yeah. fuck this. Unless they're an Asian American character yeah. uh, or, or an Asian American actor, yeah. it's not going to happen. Like they'd they'd have been much happier with BD Wong playing, yeah. <laughs> the, playing the, the major. Character. That would have been amazing, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, look, we just completely switch the gender as well. Yeah. So like I, I I was dis- I you know I was like I, I paid them good money. I watched okay. it in IMAX because I was like I'm I'm only going to shit on this if I've seen it. Okay, that's, that, that's, that's fair. fair. Yeah, and and they literally whitewashed her in the movie, and I was like, "Movie, you didn't have to do this." No, you I, didn't. You you didn't have to lean hard into the whitewashing aspect of it, but because you did, now it's part of the discussion. If you didn't right. do that, it would never be part of the discussion. Like talking about that in the film, like talking about that aspect of the movie, wouldn't have made sense because it didn't happen in the movie. It's like this right. meta thing. But now that you put it in the film, it's inexorably linked to this whole whitewashing thing. Why do we do mess. that? It's a mess. Why, why do we white people do that? I don't know. Because it feels like almost the equivalency of like you're hanging out in, in an environment with somebody who is Japanese or African-American or Native American. And you're always like, 
oh yeah, I grew up with a friend of, I have a buddy who's like somehow it's, we're waving this safety flag yeah. of like, yes, I'm accepted by someone from this culture. Like it, it's one of those, like, we see what you're angry about and we're going to answer this problem. It's like, stop just, talking. Yeah. Just stop, stop. answering the question. Like, you can figure this out on the back end. Just make the thing the way it should be made. Yeah. Because I assume that's not something that they do in the comic. In the in the comic, her origins are kind of nebulous. Like you get the idea that she she was a person at some point. Right, but you don't know where the brain came from. You don't know where the brain came from. You're assuming okay. she was Asian because her name is Makoto Kusanagi. Um, okay. And that, you know, so we're assuming that her original self was Asian, but that's not necessarily clear. So, like, there's this okay. this meta question of like, was she a person or is she a construct? Like, was she okay? Con- like, that makes sense. You said she she is an android, correct? Or she, yeah, she's an android. So she has a okay a human brain, so realistically, robot body. So realistically, <laughs> as far as physical being, she's a robot, not a person. Yeah. So I, I understand there's an there's a super fucking pedantic douchebag white guy argument to be made about yeah, this, blah, 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 blah. right? Yeah, what she's not actually Asian is she really Asian? Like fuck off! Like I, just fuck off! Yeah, and that so and, and I I recently got sucked into a Twitter thread about that, and I was <laughs> of like, of course you did. I, I was I was like, I don't know why I'm being dragged into this, and I was about to respond, and then I looked at the people arguing about it, and I was like, one of them had six followers. One of them had ten followers, and I'm like, I don't need to get don't involved. Do I don't, don't need to, do it. I don't need to don't get do involved. Don't do it. I, I literally had this <laughs> moment where I I commented on something on a fellow podcast, our own Marty Day, uh, and I made the mistake of almost getting into a wrestling argument with a racist guy, and I was like, you know what? No, I'm going to delete my comment, and I'm going to back away slow because I don't need to be making public comments anymore about Hulk fucking Hogan. Oh. I don't. I don't. I don't. Oh. I swear to God. Okay, quick quick aside. They had how many people? You have Ric Flair on the payroll in the building. The thing happened in Florida. He can take a goddamn shuttle bus to the arena, have him come out and go, woo, mean, woo, gene, mean, woo, yeah. and just move the fuck on. We do not need to grease up racist-ass Terry Balea. We don't need Terry. We don't. Terry can I, be canceled. We, I, I don't need he him as Thunderlips. I don't yeah. need him as Thunder in Paradise. I just yeah. realized he started on WCW Thunder. He's been on a lot of Thunder related things. <laughs> think about it. The word Thunder. <laughs> that is really fucking like I have never done that math until that moment right there. Yeah. Wow. Anyway, um. So yeah, I, I. Anywho. Oh, okay. I, so one yeah. one more thing to add about Scarlett Johansson. So like, yes, please. thank so, you. Sorry. So um. She's in this movie. She doesn't seem to care that it's irritating people. Whatever. Fine. Move on. Then she got cast as a trans person in a film and didn't understand why that was problematic. <laughs> like, the trans community was, like, up in arms that, like, she she didn't understand that, like, taking this role away from a trans actor could be seen as something that would... I don't know. Was this a, was this a what what movie was this? I I don't remember. Um, she eventually backed out, so someone else they they actually oh, okay. they okay. actually did hire a trans actor to fill that okay. role. But like okay. for the longest time, she was like, I don't understand what the problem I, is. Like I'm the best, act, you know. They hire the best actors for the best character, you know. To, do they? they? If they're hiring her, <laughs> are they really? <laughs> so like so yeah, like fr- friend Scarjo. Like, I saw Thor Ragnarok. There are better women in the Marvel Universe. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hazel saw like, Thor I, Ragnarok. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I'm not saying I have any necessarily real issues, but, like, I'll take her over Gwyneth Paltrow. Um, mm-hmm. But she wasn't exactly, like, killing it with the character work, at least near as I could tell. I mean, maybe, maybe I'm wrong here, but... Yeah. I'm sure there are some super big Black Widow fans that are going to tell me to shut the fuck up and like that's your wheelhouse right on you. I thought um, I thought she was really good in Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier is okay. is like my favorite Marvel movie. Yeah, so yeah I, I can get down with that. I I, I think I I recently watched uh, Iron Man two, mm-hmm. and 
was not super impressed, but I realized they didn't really give her a whole lot of material to work with, so that's not necessarily her fault. Yeah, I think the Russos did a really good job. Like they they knew what tone to strike between the relationship right. between her and Steve, and I thought I thought it was great. Yeah, it, I think maybe I might be not enjoying her in Civil War as much. Civil War was bad. Yeah, Civil War was not a good a good thing, <laughs> and also Age of Ultron was not not the best. Yeah. Yeah, I enjoy Civil War a lot more than Age of Ultron. But anyway, I, yeah. I digress. Jamie Noguchi. Yes. Is there anything else you are geeking out about? Or do you want to get to the topic? Because Me. we, we, we have... should probably get to a topic this year. So they go through the rift in the Pacific... <laughs> and on the other side, they find a man slowly dying named Zordon. And we suddenly turn Gypsy Avenger into the first Megazord. <gasps> and we tie together Power Rangers and Pacific Rim. Oh, They're already fuck. giant robots fighting monsters. If the monsters were all created by Rita or Lord Zed or God forbid Ivan Ooze, yeah. then we could... <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. The... We, we tie those things together <laughs> and then we've got a super cool stylized movie that already has a bunch of robots all over the place and a franchise that has a fucking ton of monsters and then combined together that we get everything going and we bring back Charlie Hunnam and we get the the most diverse yes yeah right we find out that Mako Mori in between the time has actually had a daughter and we get Idris Elba's kid yeah oh yeah Mako Mori's kid we <laughs> we get Charlie Hunnam and fucking Scott Eastwood why not and then someone else to put together the Power Rangers. Oh, They're originally Pacific Defense Force that have been picked by Zordon to be Earth's mightiest defenders. I'm there. I'm there. We include Rift Tech into the fucking oh my Jaegers. God. Dude, that's oh, that's so good. That's so good. That's so good. And you get you get you get the Power Ranger theme, and you get the Pacific Rim theme, and you do this like epic guitar you, mashup. Aww. You get Tom Morello to do the Power Rangers theme from the original one. Oh, fuck, fuck, dude. I want that. I don't know how you pay Tom Morello to do that, but I'm sure there's enough. I money. want that. As a fuck mask. I want. I want this. See. I want See? this. See what I'm talking about? I want yeah. this. Yeah, let's throw away mask. Mask fuck, is fuck bad. Mask. Fuck mask. Fuck Got something Force. better for you. I want yeah, this. I, I can fix this. Yeah. By the way, I'm not going to say fuck Transformers. I think I hope the new one's a lot better, and I want Transformers to be cool. Not only because we have a very close friend who is a super big Transformers fan, but it has the ability to be real fucking cool. Yeah. Like it really does when done properly. But yeah. anyway, so yeah, I God. I am all about that. Pacific Rangers movie. Like, yeah. I am... Oh, my God. I, the poses. The music. The monsters. I, I think it's a sequel. It's a tie-in. We actually call it Pacific Rangers. And we we do a nod to it being Power Rangers movie. Go, but, go, like... Go, yeah, yes, yes. That's... When Pacific we, we turn, Theory comes out, that's what I'm just going to call it. I'm just going to consider yeah. it a Power Ranger movie. I don't give a we, shit. We, like, we, we take the, the super British guy who originally helped um, Charlie Day get into the thing with you know, whatever it is. Yeah. We just basically turn him into Alpha. He'll run around all over the place. He'll have his own armor because why not? Maybe we'll like take an arm off or something like that. He'll have like one shiny arm yeah. and he'll run around getting all excited yeah, going, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It'll be fucking great. Yeah, like... <laughs> They are called Rangers. But they are called Rangers in the Pacific Rim universe. Then we we just we just tie it in. It's just it's there. We just just tie it in. It's perfect. You honestly, like all Hasbro needs to do is buy the Pacific Rim toy rights and let's just do that. Yeah. Uh, you know, we should we should write a letter. <laughs> Dear Hasbro. Dear Hasbro. Get the fucking money. <laughs> uh, you know, honestly, Jamie, when this comes out. Tell Hasbro just to fast forward 
to like the God only knows, I don't know, like 50 or 49 minute mark and then just tell them, hey, kids, we have an idea. Yeah, we can fix Pacific Rim. We can fix the Power Rangers movie. I, I didn't watch it. So I don't know if it actually needs to be the, fixed or not. The Power Rangers movie was was entertaining. It was good for what it was. I hated the suits. I hated the robots. Um, but it was a really good kids. Yeah, it was I, like a good high school movie. Like it yeah, felt, but like the thing was it was it shot like a Zack Snyder movie? Was it all way too dark for its own good? No, it wasn't. Oh, okay. It was wasn't. okay. It seemed like all the promo images I saw, it was like everything was shot in very poor light, and everything was intentionally shiny. So this way, yeah. like you didn't see a whole lot of the details or anything else like that. The, the ads it always looked like they were hiding something. It, it was it was like a really high priced steakhouse that was serving kind of shitty food. Really? Like the lights are down low to make sure you not notice how, what the quality of the food looks well, like. The, the thing is, the suits were actual actually made. Like those suits right. are like Weta Workshop did this amazing work on these suits. And I hate them. They look terrible. Well, then, then let's not pretend here. Let's just take the Pacific Rim ones. We color code them. We do one massive Jaeger that requires five pilots all to be drift compatible. We put all of them together against their better odds for the betterment of the planet. We take on one giganto fuck monster yeah. and we finally fight it. That's it. Because there's there's precedent for both of those. Because like in the last Pacific Rim thing, I know Giganto Funk Monster. Yeah, I I I think there's a very good possibility. By the way, I watched that again the other day, and I wasn't drunk this time, uh-huh. and it was only kind of bad. <laughs> it is so to me. It felt like um, it was made for television. It was very much a sequel. Yeah, it felt like... We're not trying to make a better movie than we were the last time, and it shows. Yeah, it felt like this would have been a great a couple episodes of uh, Super Sentai Pacific Rim Death. Yeah, there, there's there's a reason why Guillermo del Toro is who he is. Yeah. And whoever that director is, is not him. Yeah, I the cinematographer wasn't bringing it, and... Yeah, I, yeah. Like, and anyway, yeah, but, we're we're getting on a, another tangent that we've already been down with that sort of thing. But anyway, yes, yeah, yeah. I, I say, fuck a mask fuck movie. Mask. Let's let's completely skip that. Hell, if you want to throw out there in the reference when we post this thing, skip the middle like twenty three minutes. Like, just fucking just, tear through just it. Ignore. It. Yeah. Let's let let like just in the nose. Just let's all agree. Mask was shit, and let's talk about a Power Rangers Pacific Rim tie-in. Yeah. We like, tried. We though, just mask those things together. We tried to get mask. I know. Place. Yeah, into a place. I might just cut it out. I might just edit it all out. <laughs> <laughs> why is this episode I, so short? Right. We why hate is gold so at the short? end. Yeah. Now we're going to reference it now. Kids, if Jamie's done this, one, I won't know because I don't go back and listen. But two, god damn it, I made the mistake of going back and listening to one, and I went back and listened to the one was on, when I was on vacation, and I had like just got done a shit day at work, and I was like, you know, I feel like going back and listening to another one of our fun conversations. I realized how relaxed I was sitting on the balcony of my goddamn beach condo. I was like, fuck, I hate everything. Why did I do this? You should have picked the one in the middle where we're still Past here. me is so much happier than current me. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> oh, man. That's so okay. If you yeah. listen to him on Spotify, you don't see yourself. So it's different. I, Jamie, you know what I, I say? Let's edit it out because, honestly, we're all going to be dead tomorrow anyway. So who cares? Yeah, that's It'll be true. Yeah. yeah. So I will cut out all that bullshit about math. <laughs> And we'll just pretend that you and I came up with the best fucking yeah. idea for Hasbro. Kids, we had probably a 23-minute rant about Mask. It didn't end well. Uh, best thing we came up with was a Small Soldiers remake, I think, and and maybe something kid-related. I don't know, whatever. Yeah. It doesn't really matter. I don't need to give Tommy Lee Jones any more work than he needs. So let's, let's get back to the whole idea of let's put together um, Pacific Rim and the Power Rangers. That's yeah. way better. Yeah. yeah, that's that's everything that Jamie Noguchi loves. And if I'm here for anything, it's to make Jamie Noguchi happy. If you see random Pacific Rim Power Ranger fan art from me in the next few days, this is why. For the record, if you made Pacific Rim and Power Ranger fan art, it's anything but random. <laughs> <laughs> but let's not pretend here. Ain't nothing random about that. Yeah, I'm just I'm just sad that. I will never be working for Disney, so I can never make my 
Power Ranger princess thing happen. <laughs> never say never, Jamie. You could be underpaid for your work if you really want to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. See? Yeah. yeah. Just a reminder, kids, we're post holidays. So if you've got any of that holiday cash lying around, go find a fellow artist that you know or find somebody online and pay that artist for their work because they got bills to pay and they deserve to be paid for their craft. Don't steal that shit. 